Hi, I'm Beth, creator of DryItCanIt.com. I like to share with you tricks, tricks, and how-tos for dehydrating food and canning food, as well as share original recipes. Today, I'm gonna to do something a little bit unique. I'm going to take a look at the rage right now that you see online, which is baking a cake in the oven and then canning it. Only it's really not canning because you're not doing any kind of water bathing or pressure canning. But essentially what people are doing online is they are taking a cake mix, could be a boxed mix, could be a homemade mix. They're putting it in jars, usually half pint jars, but I've seen some on pint size jars. Um, putting it in the oven, baking it, and then quickly putting the cover on it. And as the cake cools, the vacuum is created and, and it seals, your jar seals, and people assume that that is canned. Now, the purpose of this video is not going to be to tell you that you should or should not do it, but I wanna take a look at the data on that, and I wanna talk about the pros and the cons, and frankly, I myself am out on this. I can make a case for doing it, I can make a case for not doing it, but I just wanna to present to you what, what, what it looks like and you can make an informed decision on what you want to do. So here's how I'm going to do this. I've got a data logger which measure, measures temperature. And the whole idea with canning is to eliminate bacteria and mold and yeast spores and of course botulism. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this boxed cake mix and I purposely chose a yellow one, which I'll explain in a little bit later. Um, but I'm going to take this recipe and today, as close as I can, I'm going to take half of this and I'm going to bake it, putting it in pint-sized jars in the oven, put the cover on, let it seal, but in one of the jars I'll have my data logger and I want to take a look at the temperature on that. The other thing that I'm going to do after I retrieve this, which is going to be not until this afternoon by the time the jar is cool enough, is I'm going to take the other half of this box and I'm going to take the cake mix and I'm going to pressure can it. And then I'm going to pull the data logger again and look at that. Now I've been working on pressure canning cakes and breads and it's taken some time to get a good product, but I do have recipes for pressure canned cake and pressure canned bread. Well, yeah, banana bread, I guess not yeast bread. But that said, again, the purpose of this video is not going to be to tell you you should or should not do this. It's simply an idea that I have to look at the pros and the cons as well as for myself. So stay tuned and I'm not going to go through the process of baking the cake or rather making the cake and putting it in the jars because you all know how to do that. But what I am going to do is share the data I get with you as I cake and bake the cake and as I pressure can the cake, all of which is going to happen over the course of today. So stay tuned if you're interested in the data and want to learn more about this. Here is part one of the experiment. I have my four half pints of baked cake using a boxed cake mix. Now, as I took these out of the oven, you'll notice that they're nicely browned, they look good, each of the cakes that I took out, um, they, the, the top of it was, you know, not quite really to the top of it, with the exception of the one that I had the data logger in. You can see I have the data logger at the bottom. That one actually went just a little bit past the top of the lip, and when I put the top on here, I had to really kind of push that down and then screw it on. But all four of these did seal. I took this cake mix and made it exactly in half. The second half is gonna be pressure canned. The cake mix had exactly two and a half cups of mix in it. I split that to uh, a cup and a quarter and I'm going to pressure can the other half of that. I used half the amount of water, half of the amount of oil. It called for three eggs. I actually took those, I put them in an immersion blender and then put, measured that, it came to just a tiny, tiny bit over a half a cup. And uh, so put just a tiny little bit more than a quarter cup in the mix 
And if I'm gonna be off on having this exact, that's probably where it's going to be, but maybe by a drop or two of eggs. So I'm really gonna emphasize again that I am not a scientist, I am not a home economist, I am not an expert, but I think that this is an interesting experiment so that we understand what we have here. So I have in this one the uh, data logger, and I'm going to open that up. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, see what the cake looks like, first of all. Again, this is the baked cake. We're going, I'm going to be doing a pressure canned one also. And uh, what you can see is that the cake rolls nice. It does have a little wet spot on top, which is where it hit the lid. Again, it I had to compress that down a little bit. So that's not really totally unexpected. And I'm going to just take this cake out. Now, the other thing I did is... The directions say to go ahead and grease the, the, the um, container that you're putting it in. So I did spray each of these jars with Pam ahead of time. And then I used vinegar to wipe off the rims before I put the cake batter in. Once the cake batter was in, I wiped off all of the rims with a, a wet cloth, basically, because I didn't want to have vinegar with the cake. So as happens oftentimes when I bake, the cake comes out without a problem. And this is what it looks like. Now I purposely used yellow cake mix because I have one of these that I marked with an LT and that's gonna be for long-term storage. Because this isn't pressure canned, I'm going to go ahead and put this in my pantry and I'm going to leave it there for months and see if anything develops on it that looks suspicious. So that's what's going to happen here. With this cake, it's, it's moist. I can cut it in half. And you can see my data logger is in it. And I'm just gonna go ahead and actually remove that from the bottom, pop that out. So here's my data logger. I'm going to go ahead and wash that off and uh, download my data and then I'm going to share that with you. But the baked cake is a very nice texture, worked perfectly well, brown. And tastes like cake perhaps just a tiny, tiny bit more moist or a tiny bit more doughy than you would in a bit regular baked cake. But that would be because you put the covers on here and you're holding that steam. Same thing with a pressure cake, pressure cooked cake. It's gonna be a little bit different texture. If you take a, a piece of chicken and you fry it or you put it in the oven or you put it in the barbecue or you boil it, the, the meat's gonna be done, it's gonna be good, but the texture is gonna be a little bit different because of the application of the cooking method. So, this is the baked cake. I'm going to take my data logger, I'm gonna wash this off, I'm going to download the data, and then I'm going to be right back to share the data for the baked cake with you. So here's the result of the graph for the baked cake, the boxed cake. So we have the temperature in Fahrenheit here, in the time along the bottom. And the cake was baked at 350 degrees, but the highest the temperature got to was 199.17. So nowhere near the 350 degree mark of the oven and well below the 240 degrees to kill the box, the, to the uh, botulism toxins. Don't let that deter you because I wanna talk about that when I wrap up this video. I also wanna show you this spike right here. Here's what I think happened. When I put the, the um, data logger into the jar with the cake batter, you can see what happens. It, well, maybe you can't see it too well, but it's, it was really above the batter. So let me put this next to it maybe. You could see that the data logger was above where the batter was because the batter was filled to about here. And so the, the, the probe was ahead of that. And I think what happened is because the probe was above the batter, the temperature came up. Well, as the cake rose, it got about even with it. The temperature dropped because the batter was there and then it came up. But that's okay because what I really wanna do is measure the temperature inside of the cake and this probe does a good job getting to the center of the jar on that. So, all right, here's part two of our experiment. I have my four half pints of pressure canned cake, the other half of the boxed recipe. And the first thing you'll notice is the difference in coloring. This is the baked one, this is the pressure canned. It's uh, certainly much more golden brown. Um, and on the bottom of this one, I have the data logger. So we're going to open this up 
and we're going to check the data and see what that says about the, um, the pressure canned cake. So I would expect this one to be more dense. I've never pressure canned a boxed cake before, but unlike the baked cakes where they're open, moisture can get out during baking, these are sealed the entire time. So we open it up and it's pretty cake-like. So the, it did rise up to the cover, so there was a little bit there, but it definitely is cake-like. So um, I don't think it's going to come out of the jar as easy as the other one, though it did. So that's good. I did spray the jars again and I did use vinegar to wipe them off. I put these in the pressure canner cold. In other words, I heated up my pressure canner with the water. I did not heat up the jars, just as I did with the baked ones. The oven was preheated, but the jars weren't. So this is the cake. Turned out looking fine. And again, this was pressure canned. Let's see what it looks like in the middle as I pull out my data logger. So there's the data logger inside again. And I'm just going to poke that out the bottom here. Now the cake feels more moist than the other one. So there's the data logger and I'll have to wash, wash that and um, get the data out. The cake too is more brown looking on the inside as opposed to the yellow, but it definitely looks like cake. It feels like cake. And it tastes like cake. I'm not sure I can tell the difference taste-wise. There is a difference, and I can feel this one being a little bit moist too. There is a difference color-wise, but honestly, I don't think there's a difference taste-wise. I don't think there's a difference color-wise. So that would tell me right away that if I bake it or if I pressure can it, I'm essentially getting the same result. Now, I wanna see what the data says. So stay tuned, I'm going to wash my data logger off. I'm going to download the data and then I'll be back to show you what that looks like. Here is the data for the pressure canned cake from the boxed cake mix. Again, temperature here in Fahrenheit, time on the bottom. Had the same situation where the pin for the data logger was sticking out a little bit. As the batter came up, the temperature dropped and then it climbed. The temperature did not get to the 240 degree mark, which is what would destroy the, the uh, botulism toxins. The highest the temperature got was 238.050. And it pretty much was leveling out here at 210, which was three minutes earlier than the time here. This was at 2.13 p.m. The canner shut off, I canned for 30 minutes. And the temperature may have come up a little bit more if I'd have canned a little bit more, but obviously the temperature started dropping after we shut that off. So, um, and here's a close up of what the pressure canned cake looked like. Really couldn't tell any difference tasting it, but the color was definitely different. So let's look at our conclusions. Here are my conclusions on this experiment. Again, I'm not here to judge which one should or shouldn't be used, which one is safe, or isn't safe. I simply wanted to look at the data to see what I could see. So these two were pressure canned. They turned a nice dark brown, taste great, color was darker. These two were baked in the oven and then the lids put on afterwards immediately, one at a time, everything sealed. Both were used from the same box of cake mix, identical recipes, split everything in half. Here's what I found. The temperature on the pressure canned ones got to 238 degrees, just a tad more, but not to 239. The baked, the baked cakes got to a high of, uh, let's see, what was it, 200, just a tad over, 0.034. Um, so are these safe? Is one safer than the other? Here's what I think. And again, I'm not a scientist, I'm not a home economist, I am not an expert, these are just my own conclusions. I present this data so that you can make and draw your own conclusions. Lots of people have done the baked cake or the baked bread, put the covers on, sealed, they've stored a long time, they've been happy with it, not a problem. The one thing that you need to know is this. Botulism is grown in an environment with no oxygen, and moist environment and temperature similar to what we have in a home. 
Is the oxygen out of these? I don't know the answer to that question because we didn't have venting like we had pressure canned. And certainly when we take them out of the oven and then put the lids on, there's an open brief period of time where other bacteria could get in. That said, there are a couple of things to know about baking them. Number one, most of your yeasts, most of your molds, etc., are destroyed at a temperature somewhere between 140 and 180 degrees. These cakes, when baked at uh, 350 degrees, using this particular brand and this particular cake mix, got over 200 degrees. So that effectively would have killed any bacteria spores that were in there. Was there an exposure to get some more in there when you put the cover in afterwards? Yep, there was. The, did it get to the 240 degrees to kill possible botulism? It didn't. But botulism is not supported in a sugar environment, a high sugar environment. Are these a high sugar environment? A cake recipe typically is. And if I look at the ingredients on this uh, particular box of cake mix, the first three ingredients are enriched flour, sugar, and corn syrup, which is also sugar. So does that mean there's more than more sugar? Everything else contains less than 2% of a number of ingredients. Does that mean this is a high sugar content and therefore I don't have to worry about botulism? I can't answer that question because I don't know what this recipe is. Let's say that I take a jar and I put three teaspoons of sugar in that jar. And then I take 97 teaspoons and put one teaspoon of something different in every single, every single one of those teaspoons. Teaspoon of flour, teaspoon of oatmeal, a teaspoon of salt, a teaspoon of pepper, a teaspoon of every spice I have. At the end of the day, I have 100 teaspoons. Three of those teaspoons are sugar. Recipes have to be listed with the highest ingredient first. So the highest ingredient in that particular case would be sugar. But only 3% of those 100 teaspoons, only three of them, would have sugar. Is that a high sugar recipe? Absolutely not. So we really don't know by looking at the box if it's a high sugar environment or not. And I really can't find anything credible that's, that says 40% is a high sugar content or 13% is a high sugar content. So that's something to kind of keep in mind. Botulinism is not supported in a sugar environment. Sugar is a preservative. I will have a link below this video, which uh, will give you a credible source that says botulism is not, not supported in a sugar environment. On the pressure can cakes, again, the cake was darker. I used a yellow cake mix. The cake was darker, looks attractive. The actual cake itself was darker. Uh, it's, it's more of a mm, kind of a pumpkin colored, I guess, rather than a yellow cake mix, what it was, but it tastes the same, the texture's the same. It's just as good. This temperature got up to 238 degrees. Did it, have, is it? Is that enough to kill the botulism toxin? It's not because it's not above 240 degrees. Um, is it likely that everything else like bacteria or molds or spores are eliminated on this? It is because they've been sealed completely. So do I think you can use either one of these and do I think that you can bake them? I think that's your personal choice. Again, my goal here was to just look at the data, consider what botulism is, what it isn't, what the toxins are, what the bacteria are, and I think this was a really interesting experiment. I'm not surprised that this didn't get to 240 because as I've worked with my cake recipes, etc., I often get just below that 240 mark unless I make a couple of adaptations to the recipes. And recipes that I put out for cakes and breads, I do get to that 240 degree mark. And I frankly might even play with boxed recipes a little bit more to see uh, where that goes. So anyway, I hope this was a learning experience. It is not meant to be a condemnation of either one of these. It's not meant to be a recommendation of either one of these. I just thought it was really interesting to understand a little bit of the science behind it. So I appreciate your watching. I hope you'll hit the subscribe button below um, to get more videos. If you like the titles, watch them. If you don't, don't watch them. Uh, thumbs up if you learned something on the video. Uh, I appreciate your watching and I appreciate your time. Uh, happy canning.